Okay, so what do I want to look at today? I want to look at a truck. Um, so I need, I'm need. i going to be looking at a truck, so I need to figure out stuff about that truck. And that truck is going to go from one spot to another. It's going to go from a parking space, or it's going to... It's waiting for a parking space, and once it sees a parking space, it's going to go in there. So the truck will be over here waiting. All right. And then it's going to see the parking space open up and go over into that parking space. Okay, that's good. Um, and this is the velocity function for that. We want to do some kinematics with calculus. So if we're going to do that, we're going to need um, some sort of function of time. So we're going to start with a function of time. And we're going to need to know things about this function. So anything that's in here, we're, we can assume we know. We know that a and that k, those are constants. So this a is there is going to be the initial acceleration. That's what I'm going to call it. Although um, I'm not going to be able to show that till the end, but I can show that at the end. This k is sort of a rate. It's a square rate because it's multiplied by that um, t squared. And so then we end up with this velocity function a times t times 1 minus kt squared. We also want to figure out what the um, dimensions of these things are. So this thing and this thing, we don't know the dimensions offhand, but we can figure them out from the form. We're going to want that in the long run because we need to figure out the dimensions at the end to make sure that we've done our work right, correct? So using dimensional homogeneity, we can figure some of these things out. So for example, um, we know that the velocity is lt to the minus 1, right? Length times um, time to the minus 1, length over time. Uh, the acceleration is multiplied by a time, so this guy over here is a t. So to make sure that this thing has the same um, units as this product, this has to have lt to the minus 2 as its units. So lt to the minus 2 up here are the units for him. Uh, for this guy over here, the k, k times t have to have the same units as 1. You have to be able to um, subtract that product from 1, which means they have to have the same units. So that means that the, the product should be unitless. So if t squared has the units of t squared, k has the units of t to the minus 2. Right, so we have t to the minus 2 here. Uh, and things are loading up on top of each other. Uh, that'll be okay. All right, so what's next? After the truck has moved to distance x, what is its acceleration? Well, that tells us one we want to find. We want to find the acceleration at uh, position x or a of x rather than a of t. a of t would just be the first derivative of, the, of this thing. Uh, we want to find it in terms of x, so that's going to give us a little more work. And we can assume that we know the distance traveled. That's interesting. x. And just for completeness, let's leave the units over there. So the units are l. OK, so that's pretty much our setup. Now that we've got all that set up, we want to figure out more or less what we're doing here. Well, this is a, definitely a kinematics problem. Uh, there are no forces or torques or energies. So this is really just kinematics, which is more or less applied mathematics. And what we really care about finding here is this acceleration. So probably the best kinematics thing is A equals dV dt. That's our best kinematic equation for this. Uh, the representation, um, I would think that something more or less like this, which is a plot of distance versus uh, velocity is what we care about, or because uh, that's what we have. So actually, we want this versus time, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to eventually get a um, distance that correlates with this, but we want to find, we know the V of T, and so that's what we start with our representation. All right, so what do we do on top of that? Uh, we've got all the things we need, so let's just figure out what we want to do to figure out what we want to do before we do the mathematics. 
right, well, the first thing is we need a composition, right? So in this case, it's easy to know something like a of x, right? Or a of t. Uh, a of x we don't know. Um, but we could say that a of x is a of t of x. So what we might want to do is we might want to find this t, which we don't know, and this a of a of t and this t of x, both of which we don't know, in order to find our a of x. So we need to find both of these. Once we find t of x, we can plug it into a. Let's see, what else can we do? Well, we can use this thing up here. We can use um, the acceleration with the derivative. Uh, so that's just a of t is just dv dt, period. All we have to do is take this, take the first derivative with respect to time, and we'll have a function for the acceleration in terms of time, and we're going to want to get rid of that um, over there. We know that function up there, so we're okay. So we can just plug this function in here and we'll be all right. Uh, let's see what's next. Now we need to do something to find that time, right? We don't know that time. Um, well, we want to do more or less the opposite of that. Um, v equals dx dt. I didn't notice that. Oh, whoops. Um, let's see. So let's find position from velocity. So that's going to be the antiderivative, right? So we have... Um, the old thing is uh, dx dt is equal to v, which means that um, x dx is equal to v dt, and v we know as a function of time, so it'll stay on this side. Uh, do our little integral, um, so that we go 0 to x dx, right, x of t, as it were is equal to um, the integral of zero, from 0 to t of vt dt. Okay, So that's just going to be x equals the integral from 0 to t vt dt. Okay, That's just a very explicit way of doing um, what you probably should do every time you think of an antiderivative. So that's pretty much it. We need to find x of t. All right, we got this guy. Um, well, we don't want that guy. That's guy. That guy's going. That guy we know, right? X is a known. Uh, is equal to the integral from zero to t. We need that t somewhere. V v of t. We know that t, and then dt. This dt is part of this symbol, so it's not really th something we have to worry about. So that's pretty much it. That's how much we know. Um, just to tell you, uh, at the end, we're going to eliminate time. I'm, after we've eliminated the time, everything's going to be okay. So now that we've got that, what are we going to do? Well, first, let's just take the derivative here. Well, let's just start with 2. Right, so a is equal to dv dt, right? Um, we know all about we all we know all about that dv dt stuff, right? So let's see dv this is a t times one minus k t squared. That's not ideal. Ideal I think would probably be to just go ahead and foil this out and go a t minus a k t cubed. Um, because after we've done that, it's very easy to take the derivative because it's just polynomial. So we just have a minus a 3 a k, excuse me, t squared. Okay, so everything's going on all right with that. Um, let's see, then we can use 3 to find our position. So x is going to equal that the integral of this same thing, um, at minus ak 
t cubed dt, 0 to t. Um, let's see, that is 1 half at squared, because it's polynomial, minus 1 quarter a k t to the fourth. All right, and that is something we can deal with. That's a quartic equation, but it's also a quadratic equation in t squared. So we can solve that by using the quadratic equation finding t squared. And since in our acceleration equation we just have a t squared there, we're just going to be able to take that t squared and plug it in there and we'll be happy. But you're always happy. I know you're always happy. That's the sort of person you are. So let's see. That means we have our... Um, Let's see, one half a k t squared is equal to minus b. So this is minus here, so that's a minus one half, so that's a one half a. Um, let's see, then we have a plus or minus. I'm going to go with minus, but if it turns out the wrong one, we can change it later. Um, this one-half a squared, so one-quarter a squared, minus four this and that. They, these have the same signs, right? So we've got one-quarter a k times x. The quarter drops, so we have a k x. Okay. And that looks kind of nasty, um, but that's okay. Let's see, if we just decide, okay, we're going to divide through by all this stuff, right? We have that um, t squared is equal to 1 over k, right, um, minus the square root of 1 over k squared minus 4x over a k. Okay, so now we're able to just plug this back up in here and we'll be okay. So let's see what happens after we do that. Uh, then we have a of x is equal to, um, let's see, a minus 3ak, right, times, let's see, 1 over k minus the square root of 1 over k squared minus 4x a k. All right, then we need to do math. Okay, 3ak, um, running in here, first of all, we cancel out the k's, so that's a minus 3a, so in the end we're going to have something minus 2a. Um, there's probably no reason to foil in the a over here, so we're going to have 3k, or 3a, excuse me, times the square root, uh, 1 over k squared, I just throw the k in there, that's k squared over k squared, so that's 1, and then I have left over um, k squared here, so I've got, cancel out that k, so I have 4kx over a, 4kx over a, uh, which is not the prettiest looking thing, but it's okay. It'll look better when I switch slides. Um, so that's looking reasonably good. Let's talk about it on the next slide anyway. So what do I have? I've got this 3a times the square root of a bunch of stuff minus 2a. Uh, remember what I said at the beginning, the initial acceleration is going to be a. Well, if you look at this, if you look at either of these, you get that, right? So here, where t is 0, you have a of 0 is equal to a. Here, where x is 0, you have 
um, 3a minus 2a, which is again equal to a. So that initial acceleration is that capital A. So we've got just about everything we wanted, everything we needed from that. Uh, let's see if it works out. So obviously this guy and this guy have the same um, units. Oh, no. Units are later, I'm sorry. First, we need symbols. Okay, let's see. What symbols do we have? First symbol is A. Do we have A? Yes, we do, so that's a given. Next symbol is K. Do we have K? We do, so that's a given. Uh, next symbol is X. Do we have X? We do, so that's a given. We have an A again, and an A again. We've already looked at both of those, so... Everything looks fine. We don't have any strange symbols that don't go with our solution. Okay. So now we can check the units. All right. So we've got all the different things for checking the units. We don't need to know anything about how we got there. In fact, we didn't need to know anything before. I probably should blank it out in the earlier one as well. Um, let's see what we have. We have, as I said before, uh, we wanted this to be A, right? So... Um, a is LT to the minus 2. This guy here also is LT to the minus 2, so that's fine. So the only thing that could hang us up is in here. Um, the 1, the square root of 1, if the x were 0, for example, the square root of 1 is 1 and it has no units, so the A is okay. So we're left with this part in here. What we want to do is find out if KX over A is unitless. And let's see how that works out. So we have um, the units of k times the units of x divided by the units of a. k, I said, was t to the minus 2. x is just l. a is l times t to the minus 2 to the minus 1. So these cancel and we have one. So actually that works out perfectly fine. The, the solution is great. So we've got this, it works out perfectly fine. This is just like what you're going to do on the, some of the homework. So I'd like you to look at it. Um, so remember, this is sort of the integral part to go one way. Um, this should be an X again, I'm sorry. This is the um, position part It goes the other way. And then, you know, we just use them to combine. So for the WebAssign homework, you just need to be able to do this stuff, at least for the next WebAssign homework. And then for some of the um, other homework, for the uh, larger worked out homework, you need to be able to do this kind of thing as well. So that's more or less what you need to be able to do as far as this next section is concerned. Um... <clears throat> I think we have everything. If you have trouble with integration or um, taking derivatives, that's math. Practice a few. I mean, that's just sort of the way it is. You have to practice these things till they become second nature. So other than that, I think it's fairly straightforward what we're doing. We're sort of doing a little bit of pattern matching and substitution, and that's pretty much everything except for the mathematics in this. All right, so thank you very much for listening, and I will see you in class tomorrow morning. Bye now.